Hey everybody, it's Alex the Code Wolf here again, and today we're going to be talking about the Azure CLI. Now, I recently created another video on the Azure Developer CLI, so that kind of prompted me to make a video about this CLI in comparison. Now, the Azure CLI is a really useful tool, but a lot of developers, when they first start uh, working with Azure, they seem afraid or hesitant or confused about using it. And so I want to put this in context and help us better understand when and why we might want to use this tool because it's very powerful. Now, when you first start out in Azure, most developers will go to the UI portal here, which is actually pretty nice. And this allows us to create app services, or for instance, if we want to create a storage account, we can just go in here and say create, and it gives us this nice user interface to go through all these motions. Well, this is great when you're starting out, it gives you kind of a visual context of everything you're doing, but over time, this can become sort of slow and cumbersome. If you're in a corporate setting where you have to create a lot of different resources, or even in your own projects, if you're developing and you wanna keep uh, destroying or recreating resources, this approach of doing everything through the UI can get very tedious. And that's where the Azure CLI comes in. This tool set lets you easily run simple commands to create, manage, and configure different resources in Azure. Now, getting started with the CLI is actually pretty simple. We can just go over to the install page, and this runs on both Mac and Windows, and any other flavor of Linux for the most part. So we just go here, and I'm gonna install this on Windows. Um, so you can just click this latest release, and it'll start downloading and I actually already have it installed, but when this finishes, you can just click on this button here and the installer is pretty straightforward. So I'll let you go through that um, yourself if you haven't already, but it's pretty easy to do. So for this demo, uh, I really wanna just start jumping in and working with the CLI to get a feel for what it can do. I think a lot of people worry too much about memorizing tons of commands or understanding all of the you know parameters or filters and everything like that but let's just walk through kind of a simple scenario. Let's say that we want to create a storage account in Azure, and then we want to upload a file to it and then download that file again later. So first let's uh, open up our Azure portal here. And we're just gonna use this uh, as we create resources with the CLI to kind of verify what's happening in the UI. And so I also have a command prompt open over on the right. And I already have the Azure CLI installed, um, and hopefully you do too if you set it up from earlier. So the first thing that you'll wanna do after you install it is to log into Azure. Um, and that command is az login. And this will launch a browser for you to log in and just choose whatever account you'd like to use. And now you'll get this message that you're logged in and you can close out of here. So once you're logged in, let's start by creating a resource group. A resource group is sort of a container for other resources or services in Azure, and it can be used to logically group things for management purposes or even security reasons. And most of the things that you'll make or use in Azure belong to some sort of resource group. So let's start by creating one. Now with the Azure CLI, most commands follow sort of a similar pattern. Um, so they all start with AZ. So we can type AZ and then they usually uh, that are then followed by a noun of the entity that you're trying to manipulate. So in this case, that's group for a resource group. And then after that comes some sort of verb or action item, um, in this case, create. And so whenever you're working with commands, you don't really have to remember all the exact syntax and everything. But if you remember this general pattern, a lot of these will start to become second nature. Um, in this case, we also have to pass in two parameters. And one of those is the name of the resource group which I'll just call uh, Code Wolf. Um, and then for a resource group, we also have to give that a location. And I'm gonna set this to East US, um, but you can choose whatever's closest to you, such as West US or Central or some other ones. Um, if you're not sure what they are, just use East West and it'll be fine. So when we run this command, the CLI will think for a moment, and then you can see it outputs the result of that action and our group was created. And we can browse all of the groups in our account using the az group list command. Remember we have az and then our uh, noun or our entity, which is our resource group. And then this time the list is the verb. So let's tell it to list out all of our resource groups. 
So it'll give us that same output. And if you want to format this a little bit differently, so it's not always this JSON blob, you can also say uh, az group list and then do output of table. So this is sort of a uh, formatting parameter. And that'll give us this nice little table in the uh, terminal here, which is a little bit easier to read for a lot of resources. Most resources do have a list command if it's something that you can make multiple of, like a resource group. So the next thing we want to do is create a storage account. And the storage account will live in the resource group. And hopefully by now you might have some idea of what this next command might look like. So that's gonna be az storage account. So there's our uh, noun or object in this case. And then we're gonna say create, and then two parameters again. So I'll call this uh, code wolf storage and then the resource group that that will belong to is the resource we created in the previous uh, command, and that's going to be uh, CodeWolf. So that's gonna go ahead and create our storage account in that resource group. Now some of these commands might take a moment to run, and that's because Azure is actually thinking about this and going through the uh, provisioning process for us. But when that finishes, we'll be able to run some more commands. So let's just wait for a moment and you can see it already completed. Um, that was actually pretty quick. Some of these deployments are surprisingly fast. And so now we could say Azure storage account list, and this will again tell us all of the different um, storage accounts that we have. And of course, you can also do the output of table if you want that to be a little more readable. So sure enough, we have uh, one storage account here, and it's a little hard to read still with so much info but there are ways to further um, filter these uh, this information down, but we'll look at that later. So the next step here might actually be optional for you depending on how your subscription is set up. Um, there's certain permission levels that we need to create uh, containers and upload data into our storage account. So if you start running into permissions issues or even if you weren't able to create the storage account, um, you can try the az role assignment command um, so we'll say az role assignment create, and then the assignee is going to be whatever your email is, so whatever email you're currently logged into the CLI with, um, or even just whatever email you want to give permissions to that. And then you just say role, and this is going to be storage blob data contributor, and then the resource group again, um, which will be code wolf. And then when you hit enter, it'll assign this role for you. I already have this role, so I'm going to skip this. But if you're working in a corporate environment where you might not have this role, or for some reason your own personal account, you're having permissions issues, just give yourself um, that role and that should fix everything. So once the permissions are set up, the next command that we want to run is to create a container. So if we go over on the left here, and I refresh this, you can see we now have our resource group, which is Code Wolf, like we created earlier. And if we navigate down into that, we do have a storage account as well. So we have Code Wolf storage. But now when we navigate down further into this, um, there's actually nothing inside of our storage account yet. So if I were to go to the storage browser, and then we can look at the containers, you can see there are no containers. And containers are what hold blobs of data. So Azure Storage um, has a lot of different options for files and queues and everything, but one of the most common uh, uses for it is to just store blobs of data, which are usually just loose files that you want to organize and keep in the cloud. So we can say az storage container create, and we'll give that container a name of wolf container, and we'll set the account name to wolf storage or actually code wolf storage, since that's what we called our storage account. And so this is telling the CLI to create a container named wolf container in the code wolf storage account. And so when we hit enter, it should take care of that for us. And you can see that that was created. And we're gonna ignore some of these uh, credential warnings at the moment. There's different ways of handling authentication for this type of thing, but we won't worry about that right now. So the next thing that we want to do is to create a file to actually put in our container. So containers are ways to organize our blobs, but right now if we were to go into this container, there's again no items found. And hopefully you can see kind of the hierarchy that's starting to form here. 
So we have our top level resource group, which can hold all different types of serv um, Azure service instances. So you could put a web app and a storage account and a database all in the same resource group. Then we have our storage account, which is a dedicated service in Azure for storing data. And then inside of that, we have our container and our blobs. So the container is going to hold these blobs. Now, in order to uh, put a blob in here, we need a file to work with. So we'll just uh, create a file quick. So we can say echo um, hello wolf or something like that and save that to wolf.txt. And so if we look in the folder that we're currently in, um, you can see that we'll create this file. And the next thing that we can do is upload that file to our storage account. So we can say az storage blob upload. And again, the account name is code wolf storage and the container name is uh, wolf container. And the file is going to be wolf.txt. Now, I also want to mention that if you get tired of typing these uh, names out over and over, or it's hard to remember what they all are, you can of course save these names into variables in whatever uh, command line tool you're working with. So for example, if you're using bash or PowerShell, you could of course create variables for the account name or the container name, or even here uh, in the Windows terminal. But just to keep things simple, I'm just kind of typing everything out here. Uh, but if we hit enter, uh, the CLI will take care of uploading that for us. And if we give that a second, you can see it says that it finished. And now if we go over to our container, you can see that we have our text file there. And this was all done through the CLI, but it updates in the UI just as we'd expect, and it gives us the same results. Now, if we look inside of our folder here, right now we still have this file, but I'm just gonna delete it locally. And so we can see what this looks like if we download the file or the reverse of what we just did. Hopefully by now you might be able to guess what that command is. So it's gonna be az storage blob, since that's the item we're trying to work on. And now it's gonna be download, and we'll say account name is code wolf storage again, and the container name is wolf container, and the name of the blob that we're trying to download is wolf.txt. And then there's another parameter called file, and this is what it will actually name the file on our system when it downloads. So we'll just call that wolf.txt as well and then hit enter. And of course we can see that pops in over here. And if we were to open this up quick, sure enough, there's our hello wolf, uh, just to make sure that that's the right file and it's still intact. You can also of course list out um, all of the blobs that are in a container. So we could just say account name is uh, code wolf storage again, and the container name is wolf container and output this as a table. And sure enough, after a moment, you can see that we get our file listed here along with some of the metadata about that file. So hopefully that gives you an idea of what's easily possible with the CLI. Now, because we wrote all of these commands out like this, that means we could also put them into a reusable script file that we could run to recreate resources whenever we need. This, pra uh, this practice is known as infrastructure as code, and it allows us to easily reproduce uh, resources and configurations out in Azure. So if we were to delete them all, we could just run that script again to recreate them. There are other tools and techniques for managing infrastructure as code, such as declarative files like Bicep and some other languages that might be a little better suited for that. But the CLI is very flexible and it can accomplish all kinds of tasks like that. Now, I also want to get you thinking about what the CLI workflow here is. So we've been working with storage, but what if we wanted to work with a web app or what if we wanted to work with a database? Well, that's why I really want to drive home that the CLI is not that complicated or intimidating. Everything we just did can be easily repeated across other services. So for example, if I wanted to work with web apps, I could just say uh, Azure CLI web app create or something like that. And then I can go to the docs and the Azure CLI actually has pretty good documentation for pretty much every command or parameter that you can imagine. Um, and then you can just sort of read through or even you know search through here for uh, whatever command or uh, task you're looking for. And then it'll list out all of the parameters for you and the options for that. So 
you really don't have to you know memorize a huge number of commands and parameters. You just have to understand how the CLI commands are generally structured and then know how to find the specific tasks that you're looking for and compile those into like a comprehensive script or something. And that's why I really want to encourage you to keep playing around with the CLI. In some ways, it can actually become just a great development power tool. It's much faster than the portal once you get good at it. And certain things about it are just very reusable and streamlined. So thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time here at the Code Wolf.